The brief video that we just watched it shows pictures of Brother Felix Y. Manalo, the man whom the members of the Church of Christ believe is God's messenger in these last days. Why do we believe that he is the messenger of God in these last days? Welcome, I'm Brother Bob Pauline. That's our topic for today on the Iglesia Ni Cristo International Edition. And participating in this week's discussion, our brother uh, Cromwell, Korea in uh, uh, London. Uh, brother Cromwell, thanks for uh, joining us in our discussion for today. Thank you for having me, Brother Bob. Uh, we also have joining us uh, Brother uh, Greg Worthen from Quezon City, Philippines. Brother Greg, welcome to our discussion. Thanks for having me, Brother Bob. As well as uh, Brother Rob Polancos in Hawaii. Brother Rob, thanks for uh, as well joining our discussion. Aloha, Brother Bob. Thank you for having me. Uh, brothers, you know, uh, this May once again is the uh, May 10th specifically, is once again the birth anniversary of Brother Felix Y. Manalo, whom we firmly believe is God's messenger in these last days. You know, we recognize that he's the instrument used by God to uh, bring to us the true service of the Lord and to grant us the firm hope for salvation on Judgment Day. We know that many people are wondering why we preach and why we firmly believe that God sent a messenger in our time. They, they think that this is some kind of new doctrine, something that we only made up for ourselves. Thus, of course, then instead of appreciating God's sending of his messenger in our time, they, they even criticize it. But dear viewers, before we get into that discussion, we would like to share with you a video of Brother Bob Smith, Brother Robert Smith, an American member of the Iglesia Ni Cristo Church of Christ, who speaks about his remembrance of Brother Felix Y. Manalo. Uh, let's, let's take a look. And my first impression was how humble Brother Felix Manala was. Imagine he was the messenger of God. He was the fulfillment of prophecy. What person other than him could have that humility, that humbleness before God and before the brethren of the Church of Christ? How these senior ministers loved him, how they respected him, how they had total belief that he was the messenger of God. And I also noticed later, at, uh, when I also attended later as a, as a baptized member, how he loved them, how he respected them, how he dedicated his life to the ministry, and to the members of the Church of Christ. It is said uh, that Brother Felix Manalo did not speak good English. He did not speak proper English, that he was not educated well enough. That's not true. He spoke good English. He spoke proper English. Much of the references that he studied were in English. He came to America to buy books on religion that were books that were written in English. And when he spoke to me in English, I understood him perfectly. Brother Felix Manalo referred to me He referred to me as my American brother. I feel more blessed as I grow older than I did then. I was young. I didn't really comprehend how significant that was. The opportunity I had to personally observe the messenger of God. 
You know, brothers, uh, watching uh, Brother Bob Smith there, uh, you know, I, I have had the privilege myself to know uh, Brother Bob for uh, so many years, and uh, he, he speaks uh, with uh, such conviction about having been able to meet uh, Brother Felix Manalo, and that's only a few of the, the multitude of memories that he has that he was able to share uh, with the, with, uh, uh, the, the messenger. How, how did you, what was your take, brothers, on uh, the words spoken there by uh, Brother Bob Smith? Well, you're, you're right, Brother Bob. It's, it's his complete conviction uh, in Brother Felix Manalo as God's messenger. And the fact that, you know, he answered some of the things that people ask about Brother Felix, like, you know, is speaking in English, did he know how to speak English, or maybe he only knew how to speak Filipino. And, and as he said, you know, when, because he was in the military here at that time, that's how he was able to meet the messenger. And he told him that, you know, every time he met him, he, he would speak to him in, in clear English, and he completely understood him. And, you know, he, just, he was just in awe of, of this man whom God sent uh, to not only deliver his message, but to really... Uh, uh, bring about, of course, the, the true faith. And yes, that's clear your memories. That in, in, right. You know, his memories are so clear. And, you know, that was more than 50 years ago, Brother Greg. 50 years. Brother, Brother Bob, if I may add to this. Uh, sure, regarding certainly. Regarding Brother Bob Smith's statements. Uh, I felt his emotion. Actually, I've, I've spoken with some of the, of course, our elder brethren who, was able, who were able to meet uh, the messenger of God, or Brother Felix Manalo. And, you know, their, their emotion, their conviction are pretty much the same. And when they react, when they speak about uh, the messenger of God, you can feel how uh, they, they loved him. And you can feel how they understood what he did. Right. As a as a preacher, as a minister inside the church. Well, well let's get uh, let's get right to it, brothers. You know, well, why why is it that the Galatian in Cristo, the Church of Christ, why is it that we firmly believe in messengers of God and 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 the fact that God is uh, is sending them? Why do we believe that in the first place? Well, brother Bob, because it's a biblical teaching. In fact, uh, it is a teaching spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ, as we can read it here in John 6.29, our Lord Jesus Christ taught this. Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in Him whom He sent. So the sending of messengers is nothing new. It is a biblical teaching. It is a tenet. It's taught by our Lord Jesus Christ, and it is something that we should believe in, which is the reason why we members of the Church of Christ firmly believe in the messengers of God and in God's commissioning or sending of them, because both are works of God that we should firmly believe in. Brother Greg, uh, what the viewers need to understand that this is not a new doctrine that we only made up or invented. This is one of the truth written in the Bible. So just as many people believe and accept that all things in heaven and on earth are works of God, they should also accept and firmly believe in the messengers of God and in God sending or commissioning them because these are also His works. Uh, let, let's bring in uh, Brother Rob Palancos from uh, in Honolulu, Hawaii. Brother Rob, why is it that... Uh our Lord Jesus Christ, why did He say there in the verse read by Brother Greg that the sending of messengers, why is it, why is it a work of God? What, what, what did He mean when He said this? When our Lord Jesus Christ said that the sending of messengers is a work of God, we can actually find the equivalent or the answer to that in Hebrews 5.4. And this is what the Apostle Paul said in that verse. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. So when our Lord Jesus Christ said earlier in the verse that was read by Brother Greg, that the sending of a messenger is a work of God, the equivalent of that is that God is the one who calls, He's the one who calls a messenger or gives them the authority to preach His words. So what we, conclude, what we can conclude there, Brother Bob, is this. 
God is the one who gives someone the authority to be a messenger. No one can just claim that they are a messenger of God. Some might say, though, Brother Rob, that, uh, uh, well, uh, I am the messenger of God. I, I, I can serve God. I, I can preach about God. Why does someone have to be called by God first uh, be, before he can, uh, he can preach? Why does some have to be called by God to become his messenger? What's the evil? Or, well, maybe we should ask, is it evil? Or what's the evil of not being called or commanding themselves? And would they be approved by God if they would simply commend themselves? Well, a messenger of God has the answer to that question in the person of Apostle Paul, as he wrote it here in 2 Corinthians 10, 12, and 18. Not that we dare to classify or compare ourselves with some of those who are commending themselves, but when they measure themselves by one another and compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. So what did Apostle Paul say about those who dare to preach the gospel even though they're not called or commended or sent by God? They are without understanding. Why? Because it was only they who commended themselves. It was not God who called or commended them. Well, if they, if they do that, Brother Greg, what, what, will, what will be the result? So they, they commend themselves or, or they simply present themselves as a preacher, present themselves as a messenger of God. What's the, what's the result? Yeah, well, we just read there that they do not have God's approval or His favor. They are not sent by God. And many religious preachers today, sadly, are like that. So here's, here, I guess, brothers, has to, be, has to be the next question. So how does God call people then? How does He commend, if we use the biblical term then from those verses? How does He call or commend His, uh, his messengers? Uh, is it, uh, should people just be waiting for their names to be written in the clouds in the sky or, or, or something like that? How does He call the messenger who He, God, assigns to start His organization here on earth? This is what we are going to proceed with in our discussion, dear friends, here on the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone, to this program, the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. Today, we are sharing with our viewers why we, the members of the Church of Christ, believe that Brother Felix Waimanalo is God's messenger in these last days. And brothers, uh, before we uh, took a break there, we were asking questions such as, well, how does God call His messengers? So you open up the sky, write their names uh, in the clouds, in, in, in dreams, uh, you know, there's, people claim all kinds of things. But according to the scriptures, how is it? that God calls the messenger whom he assigns to start his organization here on earth. Uh, Brother Rob, let's toss that question to you. You're right about what you said earlier, Brother Bob. There's a lot of people that can claim different things, uh, but it's best if we stick to what's written in the Bible. So let's take an example in the Bible of someone that God called. And how did he call that person? We'll read here in Exodus 3, 10 down to 11. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? In this verse that we just read, the one that's speaking in this verse is our Almighty God. The one whom he called to be his messenger is Moses. And he spoke to him face to face. That's one of the ways that our Almighty God would call someone to be his messenger. And, and Brother Rob, that's exactly what many people nowadays are still expecting to be happening. happening. That, that's what they want to find nowadays. You're right, Brother Bob. And the follow-up question to that, normally when we read this verse, people will ask, well, how about Brother Felix? When did God speak to him? Where did God speak to him? They're looking for the same way 
or they're looking for that same way that God called Moses, they're trying to find that in the way that God called Brother Felix Manalo. Precisely, which then brings us again to the next question, obviously, which is in the Christian era of time, is that really the way? How does God call the messengers he sends in the Christian era? Well, Brother Bob, we can actually read that in the book of Mark 1, 2 to 4. This is what we can read. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Who was the fulfillment of this prophecy recorded in the book of prophet Isaiah concerning a messenger of God who would be sent before our Lord Jesus Christ? It was John the Baptist. Well, how was he called or appointed by God? But wait, uh, Brother Cromwell, did God speak with him personally, face to face, like what he did with, uh, with Moses? Well, Brother Bob, no. Rather, it was through this prophecy of our Almighty God. So it was by prophecy. So we have we're speaking through Moses, and that, and that era of time was face to face. Here was uh, uh, already now the beginning of the uh, New Testament time. It's through uh, a prophecy. Aside from John the Baptist, is there anyone else whom God sent by means of prophecy? Who else was sent by God by means of biblical prophecy? Let's read here in... Luke 4, 14, and then we'll also read verses 16 to 21, another example of someone who was called by means of prophecy. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Our question earlier, Brother Bob, was, if I'm not mistaken, who's another example of someone who was called by means of prophecy? What we just read in this verse was about our Lord Jesus Christ. God appointed Christ to be His messenger. How was Christ called to be His messenger? It was by means of prophecy. So who was the one that was able to explain the prophecy? It was Christ Himself. What, should it, what is it, Brother Rob, that, uh, that we should notice about that? Well, what we should notice, Brother Bob, is the messenger being prophesied is the one who will testify or will prove that he is the fulfillment of that prophecy. You know, uh, brothers, um, le let's take a look at this from another vantage point for a second. You know, because others may say that, well, we don't oppose the uh, uh, biblical prophecies that are attesting that God sent John the Baptist. We're not opposing the biblical prophecies that God sent our Lord Jesus Christ. They completely accept those to be true they may say, but what they are opposing and what they are refusing to accept, brothers, is the teaching that Brother Felix Y. Manalo is God's messenger. So, with the same question that Brother Rob you just posed a moment ago, are there biblical prophecies attesting to the divine authority of Brother Felix Y. Manalo as a true messenger sent by God? Dear friends, stay with us because we're gonna answer that 
as the Galatian Crystal International Edition continues. Welcome back to the Glacier Cristo International Edition. Before the break, we mentioned that, well, you know, others are saying that they, they don't oppose the biblical prophecies that give testimony that God sent John the Baptist, nor do they oppose the biblical testimonies and prophecies concerning God sending our Lord Jesus Christ. They, they completely accept that John the Baptist and our Lord Jesus Christ are true messengers of God. But what they are opposing and refusing to accept is the teaching that Brother Felix Y. Manalo is God's messenger. So, are there biblical prophecies attesting to the divine authority of Brother Felix Y. Manalo as God's true messenger? Brother Greg, we'll toss it back to you. Well, there are, there are many prophecies pertaining to His divine commissioning, and one of them is what we can read uh, here in the book of Isaiah 41.9, where God says this concerning Him. You whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest regions and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not cast you away. So here, God specifically speaks about His chosen servant from the ends of the earth. And if we notice, dear friends, that the prophet Isaiah is also the one who prophesied about the servant of God whom He called from the ends of the earth. We firmly believe that this prophecy was fulfilled in the person of Brother Felix Y. Manalo. And you know, brothers, you know, there are those who are asking us, you know, how do you really know for sure that this prophecy pertains to Brother Felix Y. Manalo? And in fact, there's, there's many other messengers of God being prophesied in that very same book of Isaiah, such as John the Baptist, as we read earlier, and our Lord Jesus Christ, and, and even Apostle Paul. And, and some would even say if they would read the previous verse, verse 8, well, that Isaiah 41, 9, no doubt is uh, referring to uh, Jacob, brother, why should the messenger of God being prophesied in Isaiah 41, 9 not be confused with or mistaken for any of these other messengers of God whom God has previously sent? Brother Bob, if I may inject a response to that, the reason why we should not mistake in the messenger in Isaiah 41, 9 that would refer to Jacob because Jacob has long been dead before Isaiah even wrote this. So it's important that we understand in Isaiah 41, 9, who is this referring to? Let me go ahead and read that again in Isaiah 41, 9. You whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest regions and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Now again, dear viewers, why should we not mistake in this uh, verse referring to Jacob? Because it refers to the, 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 the time element. It says here, from the ends of the earth. So the emergence of the messenger was specified from the ends of the earth. When this, this uh, period known, uh, brothers, that uh, Brother Carmel uh, is uh, pointing out from that verse, so obviously then it can't be referring to Jacob, but it can't be referring to uh, uh, messengers of time past. It's referring to a messenger of God at a, at a time period called the ends of the earth. But then uh, w what uh, Brother Cromwell ends of the earth, uh, people will surely want to know, well, when, is that, when is that time period, when is the period known as uh, ends of the earth in that prophecy? Let us read in Matthew 24, 3 and 33 and 6 to 8. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming 
and of the end of the age. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. In many of our previous studies, we learned that the period known as the ends of the earth is the time when the end or the second advent of our Lord Jesus Christ is near. And one of the signs that the time is already at the ends of the earth is the world war that broke out on July 27, 1914. But Akrama, what's the significance of that? Because uh, when, when was the Iglesia de Cristo, the Church of Christ, when was it registered with the Philippine government as a result of the preaching function of Brother Felix Y. Manalo? Well, it was also on July 27, 1914, the same time when the First World War broke out. So what should we learn here? What should we notice about that? Well, there is a wide gap between the time of emergence of the previous messengers of God who were also prophesied in the book of Isaiah and that of Brother Felix Y. Manalo, the messenger of God in these last days. But you know, our detractors sometimes argue that even if the other or uh, previous messengers of God came from the East, be it John the Baptist, even our Lord Jesus Christ himself, the, the Apostle Paul and such, could it be that they are the ones being referred to in the prophecy of Isaiah, which we hold on to as the basis of Brother Felix Y. Manalo is the messenger sent by God? Brother Rob, let's, let's uh, toss that, uh, that question to you. Well, let's read the answer, Brother Bob, here in the book of Isaiah. This time we'll be reading in chapter 46 and the verses 11. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man who executes my counsel from a far country. Indeed, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. This verse that we just read in the book of Isaiah is the prophecy referring to none other than Brother Felix Manalo, God's messenger in these last days. So this, uh, why should this prophecy not be mistaken as referring to the other messengers of God from the East, Brother Rob? That's, that's, that's the point. They, 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 they sometimes will, will say that. No, that's referring to this one. No, 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 that's referring to that one. But we're sure that it's not. Why not? Well, in the verse, Brother Bob, it states that the messenger being prophesied, the one who was likened to a bird of prey, the verse or prophecy specified where they would originate or where they would come from. The verse said in the Bible that they would come from a far country in the east. So not only a time frame as mentioned by uh, Brother, Brother Cromwell, a time frame called ends of the earth identified by a, a time a refer that would be uh, with a world war such as uh, 1914 so world war. So not only the time identifies but also the place. Is that, is that what you're saying, Brother Rob? Yes, Brother Bob, exactly. So well, what is that far country in the east then which specify being, is being specified by the uh, prophet Isaiah? Brother Greg, let's, let's toss that question to you. Yes, Brother Bob, I, I'd like to also read from the book of Isaiah in a related prophecy. We read 41.9, uh, we read uh, also 46.11. Now we're going to read 43.5 in a related prophecy pertaining to this place, this far country in the east as also spoken by the prophet Isaiah 43.5 and this is recorded. From the far east will I bring your offspring and from the far west I will gather you. So here the prophet Isaiah is the one who also explains that the far country in the east he was referring to is the far east. Well, what's the fulfillment of that prophesied Far East? Because many people would point to a whole bunch of different, uh, uh, or have their own ideas of what the, 
What's the Far East? What's that place where God's messenger that was compared to a, a, a bird of prey, he would originate from that place in the Far East? Yeah, for that, Brother Bob, let's read a book entitled World History, which was written by Arthur Bock, Preston Slauson, and Howard Anderson. And this is stated on page 445. The Philippines were Spain's share of the first colonizing movement in the Far East. So, even though the other messengers of God, whom Isaiah also prophesied, were from the East, we are certain that they are not the ones being referred to in Isaiah 41, 9 to 10 and Isaiah 46, 11. Why? Well, because the time of emergence of the messenger in 41, 9 was specified. And that time, biblical time element, is the ends of the earth, which in actual fulfillment would be concurrent with the first world war, which broke out on July 27, 1914. In Isaiah 46, 11, the place of origin was specified also, Far East, the fulfillment being the Philippines. So, uh, thank you for that, Brother Greg. Uh, what further proves, brothers, that uh, Brother Felix Y. Manalo really is the fulfillment of these prophecies? If there would still be a viewer out there that this uh, remains skeptical, Brother Cromwell. Well, Brother Bob, so we were able to establish the time element, the place, and now what about the work? We can read that in Isaiah 41, 9, 10. Here we can read that where God declared here, Isaiah 41, 9, 10. You whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest regions and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. What further proves that Brother Felix Y. Manalo is the fulfillment of these prophecies? Because... God's promises to him has been fulfilled. Well, just like what we have heard from the verse that we just read, God declared, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now, the question is, did it really happen that the messenger and the work that he began were strengthened and helped by God? Although it started small and weak, but through God's help, through God's help, the Church of Christ has now reached a glorious stature. You know, brothers, there's uh, many ways that uh, it, it could be described, or the Church of Christ could be described as having reached a glorious stature, wouldn't you say? Well, for sure, Brother Bob, you can just see where uh, the Church of Christ continues to reemerge in, in different countries throughout the world, whether it's in India or Africa or Russia uh, and, and in different places in the United States and in Europe. This is a, a, a prominent proof that God is the one who holds this mission and God is the one who's blessing it and, and guiding it. Even uh, more than 140, 140 plus uh, places of the world where houses of worship and uh, cultures uh, from everywhere on the planet Earth are, 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 are joining, uh, joining the church and having a real impact in uh, reaching out to our fellow man, to those uh, that are in need with the uh, INC giving projects and the uh, various uh, outreach programs of, of the Church of Christ. It's really a wonder to watch the glorious stature of the church and people around the world coming to realize and know how God's mighty hand is at work here uh, inside the church. How about in your, in your neck of the woods over there, uh, uh, Brother Rob? Uh, you're noticing these things, I assume, as well, right? Oh, definitely, Brother Bob. Um, you know, like what you mentioned earlier, uh, we can see it throughout the world, and I think any member in the Church of Christ can testify uh, to the growth of the Church of Christ in their area. For us here in Hawaii, uh, the congregations continue to grow. And the amazing thing about that is 
Uh, everyone knows that Hawaii is uh, composed of you know, several islands. Uh, here for us in Honolulu or in the island of Oahu, uh, you would think that we would only need a couple of congregations because it's such a small place, but uh, just in you know, these past couple years, the, the number of congregations has grown so much. So it's not only individual growth, it's, you're talking about growth by congregations, and uh, it's uh, really uh, quite uh, a phenomenon around the world. Everything that you mentioned, Brother Bob, is a fulfillment of God's promise to His messenger, Brother Felix Manalo. And that promise didn't stop. It continues to be fulfilled today. That's why the Church of Christ reaps so many victories up until now. It's because God is the one who called Brother Felix to preach the Church of Christ. This church that we belong to is God's last work of salvation. So if there's anyone out there who still has any doubts about Brother Felix being the last messenger, then we should ask ourselves this question. If Brother Felix is not the messenger of God, then why are all of these things being fulfilled in the Church of Christ? Good, good question, Brother Rob. You know we, know, we all know that there are people who speak against Brother Felix Waimanalo. Even today, there are those who criticize, there are those who reject him as being the messenger in these last days, and they go against the Church of Christ, go against what he preached. But what did God say would happen to all of those who oppose the messenger that he sends? Let's read the answer here in Isaiah. We'll be staying in chapter 41. This time we'll be reading verses 11 to 12. This is what we can read. Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing. And those who strive with you shall perish. You shall seek them and not find them. Those who contended with you, those who war against you, shall be as nothing, as a non-existent thing. What we read in the verse, Brother Bob, was about those who would go against this work of salvation. Those who would choose to go to war against the messenger of God, Brother Felix Manalo. And the verse is very clear. And the prophecy is fulfilled. All members of the Church of Christ are witnesses to this. The verse said that those who are incensed or war against the messenger shall be ashamed and dis disgraced. They shall be as nothing. And that's exactly what we see today. From the time that Brother Felix started this work of salvation up until now, everyone that has tried to stop this work of our Almighty God, they weren't able to be successful because our Almighty God is the one upholding this work of salvation or the Church of Christ. Brother Greg, why is it that no matter, no matter what detractors do, no matter what detractors say, they cannot stop, they cannot slow down nor hinder the continuous growth of this mission started by the messenger in these last days. Why is it that all their efforts to attack have no effect? Well, as Brother Rob mentioned, because God is the one upholding it, and God proves this as we can read also in the book of Isaiah 43, 13, and this is what God testified. I am God, and also henceforth I am He, there is none who can deliver from my hand. I work, and who can hinder it? So God Himself firmly testifies that this mission, which the messenger upheld in these last days, is His own work, or the work of God. Therefore, nothing and no one can ever stop or hinder this. So even though God's messenger, Brother Felix Y. Manalo, was laid to rest, and so too was Brother Iranio G. Manalo, the church still continues to succeed in its various endeavors because the God who owns this mission is the same God who guides the administration of Brother Eduardo V. Manalo. Even though many brethren today were not able to meet Brother Felix Y. Manalo in person because he died more than 50 years ago, all of us have witnessed how God has been fulfilling His promises to His messenger. May these serve to strengthen and edify our faith for us to continue upholding our divine calling and our membership in the Church of Christ until the very end of our lives. And for our friends, loved ones, 
to everyone who are watching this program, who are not yet members of the Church of Christ. We invite you to learn about the Church of Christ, learn about the teachings taught by the last messenger of God, Brother Felix Y. Manalo, so that we will be able to understand and know how we can truly receive salvation on the Day of Judgment. Well, we'd like to thank all three of you, brothers. Um, Brother Cromwell Correa in uh, London, Brother uh, Greg Worthen in Quezon City, Philippines, as well as uh, Brother Rob Palancos in Honolulu, Hawaii. Brothers, we thank you all for giving to us Bible-based answers so that, as the Apostle Peter said to the members of the church, you'll be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you're living the way you are. 1 Peter 3.15. Well, uh, brothers, uh, that, that does it for us. Uh, that does it for us today. Again, uh, a thank you for a lively discussion that I believe will benefit uh, everyone. It does it for us here today at the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. We hope that you'll join us again next time. I'm Brother Bob Pauline. Thanks for watching. And as we come to the end of our program, as always, we invite you to join us for a short prayer. Our Almighty Father in Heaven, yes, Lord. we yes, offer Lord. our heartfelt thanks to you, dear Father, yes. because you called us to be a part of the, mem of the Church of Christ, yes, which was yes, taught Amen. by your last messenger, Brother Felix Manalo. Amen. Thank you Amen. so much for our election, dear Father, yes, because it yes, is here Lord. where we are able to serve you and we have the right to receive salvation. Amen. We humbly Amen. ask of you, dear Father, to please bless all of those who have viewed this program. Yes, May they also open their hearts and minds to the teachings taught by the messenger. Amen. May they have Amen. faith in everything that is taught in the Bible yes. so that they would yes. also become members of the Church of Christ Amen. and be able Amen. to receive the promised eternal life. Amen. Our Lord Amen. Jesus, you are our mediator. Yes. Can you please yes, pray yes. for each one of us, dear Lord? Yes. Help yes. us please, to Lord. remain inside the church. Yes. Ask the Father Amen. to bless us with strong faith yes. so that we Amen. would be able to complete the race that our God has set before us. Amen. Our Amen. Father, we also pray for our executive minister. Yes. We humbly Amen. beg that you would please bless and uphold Brother Eduardo Manalo, yes. since he is Amen. the one that you place to lead us inside the church. Amen. Please continue Amen. to guide and bless our executive minister yes, so he can Amen. lead us in the proper way of serving your name. Amen. We pray Amen. and we ask for everything in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.